Hey everyone, hope you're having a fabulous day. Welcome, I'm Marley, I'm a first year med student, but only for like another three weeks? But I took my sweet time getting to this point, which is what we're gonna talk about real quick today. Gap years, are they worth it? Are they good or bad? When I decided for sure I wanted to go to med school, I had no idea and I wish I'd known what I know now. And honestly, gap year is such a misnomer. I personally like the term bridge year, better because when i hear gap i just think blank uh drop off i'm not doing much not great vibes and that totally is not what a gap year or bridge year should be for a pre-med student so yeah from here on out i'm uh, calling bridge year so by the numbers from the ama and i'll put a link to the stats in the description box 43.9 students who enrolled in medical school took one to two bridge years, while 13.4% took three to four and 7.9% took five or more years. So that means adding it up, uh, just over 65% of incoming medical students take at least one bridge year. And also the average age of medical school matriculants or people who enroll and start is 24. And for reference, like I fit really well into these stats actually. Uh, I started when I was 25. I took one full gap year or bridge year, plus put undergrad on hold for about 18 months while I lived and volunteered in Peru as a missionary for my church. So altogether could be considered like two and a half gap years. So anyway, just know that it's actually more common for pre-meds to take time off before starting medical school than it is to just go straight through from undergrad to med. Okay, Marley got it, uh, bridges are okay, but what do you actually do during that time? Yes, okay, so many options. Lots of people out there will tell you to do very like specific things during a gap year, like, oh, you have to do research or you have to be doing clinical experience or you're just gonna get blown off by the admissions committees and they're not gonna like you. No, no, that's not the case at all. There is no one size fits all strategy to planning, carrying out a bridge year. For sure though, research is great, clinical experience is awesome, but basically the best thing or things that you can do during a bridge year, things that A, strengthen the weaker parts of your future application, B, something that offers good connections or potential letters of recommendation, and C, possibly the most important, something you really actually like doing. Icoms are not dumb, they can sniff out box checking behavior and doing stuff just to pad your resume from like a mile away. Luckily, things that you like doing that are interesting and can be included on your apps, they can be med related or totally not med related. For example, during my bridge year, I was living in Southern California, decided to pick up surfing a little bit and planned out an amazing West Coast road trip complete with backpacking and car top tent camping, because I love planning and going on trips like that. And those things were fun and completely unrelated to medicine. But guess what my interviewers actually asked me about more than any other part of my application? This trip, because it was epic. And I was able to write about it on some of my secondaries. Don't get me wrong, like I definitely did some classic pre-med things during that bridge year. Like I did some research and volunteered and shadowed and worked as a personal trainer. But Adcoms definitely like to see that you are a real human with interests outside of medicine that go alongside your demonstrated commitment to medicine. And one other thing that I'd add as a piece of advice that I picked up from my time on my school's admissions committee is to make sure to try to do stuff that is well outside of your comfort zone. This is important because pretty much everything that you do in medical school puts you outside of your comfort zone in some way. And adcoms like to see that you can handle that and that you can reflect on that in a mature and growth progressive mindset kind of way. Ultimately, if you have any hesitations or reservations about going straight through from undergrad to medical school, no bridge gap, bridge gap, no bridge year. And that could be for a number of reasons. Uh, for me, it was burnout. I was worried about burning out. I also wanted to work. A lot of people want to work and save money. Some people just want to strengthen their apps. Some people just want to live a little. Some of them just want a combo of all of those things, all of the above. But really, if you have any reservations or you don't feel like you're, 100, you're putting 100% of yourself into the application cycle, then I wouldn't do it. I'd say just take the year, apply the following year. And some people like inevitably go and say, oh, well, if you take a bridge or a gap year, whatever, then you're going to miss out on a year of physician salary down the road. Really? Like, it's not about the money. If I was worried about money, I would have gone into like hedge fund management. I could go into a lot of other things that would make a lot more bank 
than medicine. If you're going into medicine, your motivation should not be centered on money anyway. So it's not about money. It's about your readiness as an applicant to take this huge, big step in your education that's really demanding and you want to feel a thousand percent ready for it and like amped. I myself just did not feel quite right with going straight on through from undergrad to med school. And I know that if I had forced it, I probably would have just wasted my time, money and effort. And I probably wouldn't have gotten it anyway because I just wasn't ready. So bottom line, if you want to take a year or two, then take it. Use that time wisely. Do stuff that you enjoy though. Also stuff that can address application weaknesses and put you outside of your comfort zone. And most importantly, don't let anyone make you feel bad for doing this. And also if you don't want to take a gap year and you just want to go straight through, Great, awesome. It's a personal decision and there's no wrong way if it's the right call for you. Okay, before we wrap up here, I have a question for all of you. Now you know that I love traveling and planning trips and stuff. And I'm guessing I'm not the only one that loves that. So I know I'm not the only one out there who wants to plan something incredible out of control for whenever COVID hits the rear view mirror, right? But I need some ideas. Like, do you have a favorite vacation spot or favorite city, state, country, whatever. Let me know down in the comments. I'm super curious. Anyway, all right, so I hope this information on bridge years has been helpful for those who are applying soon. And let me know if it was by hitting the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to share it with your pre-med friends and family. As always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions whatsoever about the application process or what med school is like or about essay writing or anything else. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Love you all and hope to catch you next week.